Sorry about that. I think it's going to be thundering again or whatever. Hopefully not. This is the uh, solemnity of the Assumption. And so we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Of course, we open ourselves to his Spirit again, present in this place. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Since it's a solemnity, we should say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers in her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelations. God's temple in heaven was opened and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its head were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron hand, with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God in his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert, where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen takes her place at your right hand in gold of Ophir. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. Hear, O daughter, and see. Turn your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. They are born in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, 
the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Mary is taken up to heaven, a chorus of angels exalts. The Lord be with you. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. I think, uh, Everyone is aware of the, the fact that this teaching, this dogma of the church was proclaimed definitively only in 1950 by Pope Pius XII. But that shouldn't uh, lead people to think that this is a, a new concept uh, uh, or a flash in the pan. This celebration of the Assumption of Mary has been on the liturgical calendar of the church since the fifth century. And it didn't just get invented in the fifth century. There's evidence that it was around for at least two or three centuries before that. Uh, the concept really starts with Mary herself, that uh, the belief was because she was to become the mother of uh, Christ, that she herself had to be different than everyone else who let you and I share something of the, the sin of human downfall, that somehow God spared her from that so that she could be a, a perfect vessel, a perfect vehicle. Uh, an early artistic metaphor and, and one in certain writings was uh, refer, referred to Mary as the Ark of the New Covenant. The first Ark, like in Raiders of the Lost Ark, that, that movie, uh, the, that box contained uh, the tablets of the Ten Commandments, so it had the words of, from God in that box. Jesus, in the Gospel of John, the first chapter, it says that he is the Word made flesh, and so since 
He, his origin is within the very body of the Virgin Mary. She became known as the Ark of the New Covenant. Her place in salvation history uh, is so great. Uh, her openness, uh, her ability, her wanting to be a part of it, to lay down her life, is a, an a example for us. She's an icon uh, for us uh, that uh, what it means to be a disciple is to be ready and willing to lay down our life. We have the celebration of the Assumption of Mary. In a way, it's a, it, there are no scriptures about it. It's not recorded uh, in the Bible. So we get these readings today. Uh, we take that Magnificat uh, reading today. But the first reading was from the book of Revelation, one of those apocalyptic visions. It sees that the, there's a cosmic sort of struggle between good and evil. True enough, but it shouldn't be, uh, you know, thought that somehow evil and good are sort of co-equals, that God somehow is a, a perfect uh, opposite or enemy for God. God is always God, and God has the last word, and the word is salvation. This is for sure, for you and for me. Uh, we see, in a way, a snapshot in the Assumption of Mary as, as being something that's in store for us. God has it in mind that you and I are part of the story of salvation. So our destiny is in, in heaven uh, to inherit uh, the good things that God has in store. We see in the Assumption of Mary our story in that way. It uh, gives us a hope uh, and a vision of what's to come. The destiny for each soul, each of us, is to be part of that story. It's a good thing. Uh, we're aware of this today. We celebrate the Assumption of Mary, and uh, it's a blessing to be able to be so aware and to celebrate that uh, experience, that blessing from God. So, out of our faith, then, we're able to present our prayers and needs again to God. Of course, we always think of our family and friends, members of our parish here, our neighbors. Today's Mass intention, we're remembering Jean Wentworth. For all of the people in our life and our parish, especially so those who are struggling today, we pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for an end to this war in Ukraine, for a de-escalation in the tensions in Taiwan, and for a definitive end to this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Loving God, you created us for salvation. We ask for your grace along the way, and we ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. May this offering, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts, aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she 
uh, marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy, we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Again, today, especially remembering Jean now went for it. And all who've died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And of course, on our journey to salvation, we have Jesus' very prayer on our lips, and so we can say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's turn to one another then and offer some sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
and let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you today, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God.